Hello there guys, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review. I hope you guys all had a great weekend. I know I certainly did. It looks like we may well be going back into lockdown. So you gotta take your fun where you can get it. And I'm all refreshed to review the final episode of this season. So we do have a three part tell all coming up. But the truth be told, I don't know how good that's gonna be. I can pretty much tell you all what's happening with every relationship before even seeing the tell all. But I guess we'll see if anyone has any surprises for us. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Kalani and Asuelu. So this is 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After, Season 5, Episode 15, Point of No Return. So we first catch up with Kalani and Asuelu, and they're going to see Asuelu's mum and sisters off at the airport. Kalani's going along just to check they actually do piss off. Asuelu tells us he's happy everything's sorted out. Yeah right. In the car, Kalani says she's really happy with how things went. I think the weekend in Utah went pretty well, and I think that we can get on for the sake of Asuelu, and he seems much happier. I feel like we took a step in the right direction for our marriage, and I feel like this is the start of something good for us. And this is typical Kalani happy speak. Kalani, where will this all end? She's trying to convince herself everything is great and everything is rosy. It's not. Tammy is still Tammy. She's a money grabbing little so and so who looks like she needs a good steam clean. His mum is still his mum. And she's not only a waste of two billion years of evolution, but she still talks out the side of her mouth about her own grandkids. She threw gritted teeth apologised to Kalani, pretty much to keep the financial lines of communication open with her son. You're still dealing with the same trash Kalani. You may be able to convince yourself, but please don't try and convince us. And then Kalani said it's going to be so weird saying goodbye to Tammy. I think we both know that we don't like each other. I don't think she's going to hug me and I don't want to hug her. Oh Kalani, if Tammy gets anywhere near you, she'll hold you in a three quarter face lock. And so they enter the hotel room. And Rosa, the older sister, says, it's nice to see you again in sign language. She seems the most normal of everyone, the truth be told. And then his mum said, thank you for coming over with the grandkids to say bye to me, Kalani. Whatever was broken is now all fixed. Don't you mean whatever is broken is not all fixed? Because we know it's not. And then Asuelu said, where's Tammy? His mum said she left this morning. And Asuelu said she left without saying goodbye. She may have left without saying goodbye, but she remembered to put a hex on you two and your relationship before she got on the plane. Your relationship's doomed. And his mum explains to producers that Tammy decided to leave early because she was so angry. And that tells the eBird quite a bit. In other words, she had enough money to fly in just for one evening to try and get extra money out of her brother and to try and fight their mum's cause. She also had enough money to just change the flight at will, to leave earlier, because she was unhappy with the outcome. And that to me says everything that needs to be said about Tammy. And then his mum told Kalani to take care of her son. Oh, she is doing, she is doing, he's her third child. And if I were Kalani, I would have said, yes, I mother your son because you failed to do so, obviously. He has no home training. And then she asked the couple for money. They both looked at each other for what seemed like an age, and then she burst into laughter. It was all a joke, guys. It was all a joke. And guys, we keep hearing from this family that everything is all written and it's all produced. If you'd like to see what a producer written shot looks like and is acted like, take a look at this. The airport, but please. I need some money. Why are you looking at each other? Oh, no, no, my kids. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> and that is what happens when you get non-actors acting you could always kind of tell. And when they finally leave for the airport, Asuelu says that things are looking up between his family and Kalani. Oh Asuelu, you're so ridiculous. Life's full of little disappointments and your mum has just added you to the list. That's all that's happened. And next time we meet up with this couple, Kalani tells us it's been a few weeks since his family came to visit and they're doing really well. She said her mum's babysitting, so they've decided to go and have a night out. So they sit down in the restaurant and they both order their food and she's got a big plate of nachos. Asuelu said, wow, that looks like interesting food. What is it you're eating? Nachos. He's been in America for two years and he's never seen a plate of nachos. And this tells me one thing. When Asuelu asked, for the best of the best, I want the best of the best. They really didn't give him the best of the best. And this is to me an indicator of how well he's integrated into American life. He's never heard of nachos or never seen nachos. I want to say it's so strange, but we're dealing with a Swelu here, so I guess it kind of isn't. 
And then Asuelu tells production he was very worried when Kalani said she wanted a divorce and that they've worked very hard on the relationship. I'm glad to see that he's worked hard. When someone's hard working and they reap the dividends, it's always marvellous to see. Hard work is all it takes. Well done Asuelu, well done on all that hard work. The waiter comes over and checks everything's okay and Kalani requests two pads of paper and two pens. He obliges and she explains that since they've been to see their white therapist, they've been in a much better place but they haven't yet had time to do their homework. Oh my god, you mean the list of the household chores that you're both supposed to do? You haven't had time in several weeks to do that? This tells me they've only seen this therapist once. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're supposed to go and see a therapist every week. I sincerely doubt that Dr Kirk just lets you do one and done. It's all very fishy. I tell you what it isn't, it isn't hard work. As far as I'm aware, all the therapists wanted them to do is write a list of jobs they think they should do around the house. It's at most a two minute operation. Kalani, you have no job. Asuelu, you work part time. Is this all the hard work that you've been able to put into your relationship? And so they both write lists and unsurprisingly both the lists are very similar. And Kalani's list said, clean the house, look after the kids, throw out the trash. Asuelu's list said, clean the house, look after the kids, feed the babies, do the trash properly. And Kalani said, so that's it, what about the babies? Do I have to do everything for the babies but you only do things for you? And he said, what about the babies? I can't feed the babies. I'm sure you can Asuelu. I'm sure they're not both on milk. And guys, Asuelu really did make me laugh when he was going down his list. He said, clean the house, I clean the house. Look after the kids, I look after the kids. Throw out the trash, I throw out the trash. Clean the bathroom, I sometimes clean the bathroom. <laughs> He was just getting less and less sure of himself as the list progressed. And Kalani explains that she wants to split everything 50-50. But Asuelu said, but I clean outside. I mow the lawn and I rake the apples. And Kalani said, forget the apples. The apples being raked does nothing for my life. That's his maybe Kalani, but I distinctly remember a couple of seasons ago, Lo having a massive go at Asuelu because he didn't rake the leaves off the front garden, so it may do nothing for your life, but it certainly saves him from an ass whooping. But Kalani's still complaining. She said, your list is me doing most of the stuff. I want it to be more equal. So Asuelu just said, I want to make you happy. I want to be with you my whole life. You are the apple of my eye, the pineapple of my life. And I think at this point, if Asuelu is not accepting the fact that housework could potentially be his work, he needs to get a full-time job. Hard work never killed anyone. I guess Asuelu's thinking, maybe not, but why take the chance? And at the end of this segment, Kalani's saying, I think there is some kind of hope in our relationship and we've never ever had that. So I guess I'm just going to go along with that and see where it takes us. When we next see this couple, we see where that's taken them because they're splitting up. And Kalani tells us, we've been arguing a lot lately and it's almost like Asuelu is purposefully trying to expose himself to COVID. What a surprise, Asuelu's a COVID idiot. And so she's sitting on the bed with her mum. And just an aside, look at their hair. In Kalani's family, all the women have got gorgeous hair. I actually can't get over her mum's gorgeous hair. They're so lucky. And she explains to her mum that Asuelu was going out with his friends and then lying about where he was going. So she puts a tracker on his phone. As you do. One day she said to him, where have you been? And he said he was driving round, but in fact he was with all his friends, playing volleyball. And when she confronted him about it, he said, I'm sorry for lying, but I knew if I told you the truth, you'd go mad. And guys, I don't know why Kalan is at all surprised about this, because this is the same chump that wanted to take his kids to Samoa in the middle of a measles outbreak. He's bothered by neither illness nor death. And she explains to her mum, I get literally nothing out of being married. And I know I shouldn't really sit here and talk about the benefits of being married. But she said there's literally no benefits, there's no companionship, no support, nothing. And the truth be told, the eBird has to agree. Even though I do like a Swalu, and I do want the family to actually work, I realise there's only so many times Kalani can flog a dead horse. Meanwhile, over in the tiny little mind that a Swalu calls his brain, he thinks he's being kicked out due to him not being careful in coronavirus. He doesn't seem to realise it's because he's a waste man. He said, Kalani overreacted. I just went to play volleyball, but I was very careful. I can tell that he just wanted to carry on his normal life and just act like Rona wasn't happening. And we see Kalani and Asuelu taking his bags out to the car and it's quite a sad sight. 
And then later on we see Asuelo on the flight and he says, I tried to FaceTime my kids but my wife didn't answer the phone. I don't know how they'll feel waking up without me being there. Well, I'll tell you what the youngest is thinking. There's room on the teat for just me now. Yay! And that's where we leave these guys for this season. So what's my breakdown of all of this? And for Kalani, all I can say is it's the end of an era. No, literally, like, an era. It doesn't surprise me at all these guys have ended up splitting up. Kalani tells us that sometimes love isn't enough. And I wonder to myself, is it even love that you have for Asuelu? I just think you happen to get knocked up by him, not once but twice, and you just stuck through it in the hope that you could somehow make it work. And I never ever thought it was love, mild irritation at best. I think he's virtually impossible to get through to. He thinks that the man is the head of the household, no matter how stupid or inept. He thinks all housework is a woman's work and everything to do with the kids is woman's work. Their relationship was never destined to move forward and he has no work ethic. He works part time and is happy doing that and playing computer games and going to play volleyball. If you want to be the man of the household, surely you need to be somewhat of a provider. But that part of Samoan culture, oh that part we can disregard. Living life with a Swelu is like living life in slow motion. It really is an episode of Groundhog Day. Kalani tells a Swelu not to do something, a Swelu goes and does it, and Kalani tells him not to do it again, and he goes and does it again. And then finally he says to Kalani, I realise now why I shouldn't have done it in the first place. And then he tells production, I don't know what the big deal is. Kalani should calm down. And then the whole cycle starts again because he starts doing whatever it was again. He never seems to learn. So guys, let me know what you think. Do you think they'll get back together again? I just don't think there's enough reason for Kalani to do it. I don't see what she gets out of it at all. And I do want to see look at Asuelu and think, Asuelu, you're punching well above your weight. You really are. I think Kalani's gorgeous. She's like an eight, a nine even. And I think Asuelu's about a seven or an eight out of a hundred. <laughs> no, I shouldn't be so awful, but he has treated her quite poorly, I think, overall. And it is partly to do with the fact that he's very, very childish, but she can't help that. He doesn't seem to be growing up. He doesn't seem to be moving along or maturing. So what do you do with someone who's a child in perpetuity? The only way out is to get out of the bedroom window and shin down the drain pipe. So guys, let me know what you think down below. Do you think she gave him enough opportunity to change? Do you think he's capable of change? And also, what do you think about her putting a tracker on his phone? I know this is a hot topic, but do you think it's an erosion of civil liberties? What made me laugh about this whole thing is the casual way that she said, yeah, so I put a tracker on his phone and just like it was nothing. So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now I understand why we saw all these videos of him and his family doing TikTok and so on, because he's actually living out in Washington with them and they're separated. So put your comments down below and I will see you very soon. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed this review and thank you to all those who have subscribed thus far. And also don't forget to smash the like button and follow me on Twitter at mbird99. You've been listening to eBird Online. Ciao for now.